Hey folks, welcome to Atomic Game Theory, the show that uses conflict theory and math to study the tiny decisions that can make big differences between winning and losing your favorite board games. Today is going to be a little bit of background for the work I do here on Atomic Game Theory. I want to study utility theory, one of the most important aspects of strategic thinking. And to do that, we're going to look at one of my favorite worker placement games, Lords of Waterdeep. In Lords of Waterdeep, you play one of the masked lords, hiring and sending adventures out on all sorts of quests. Each of those quests require a different level of investment and gives you a certain number of victory points and resources at its completion. Almost every resource in the game rewards you with victory points at the end of the game, which makes Lords of Waterdeep a perfect example of utility theory. Economists use utility as a measure of a preference for a commodity or good, and while commodities or goods seem easy to measure, preference is a little bit harder. If that seems difficult, don't worry. Let's take a look at a simple example. Say that a copy of Twilight Imperium has shown up at your favorite local gaming store. It's a first edition, signed by the designer, and it's on sale. You want that game. You want it real bad. But what about me? I mean, we're friends. Maybe I want that game. Ever think about me? You have two choices. Buy the game or don't buy the game. I have the same two choices, and we're going to take all those and build our strategic matrix. Consider the outcomes. We could both try to buy it, but is that really a good outcome? Do we both argue about it? Or maybe neither one of us buys it, and then it's still left on the shelf, and then Dave picks it up. And we don't like Dave, because he's a jerk. Sorry, Dave. What about the other two boxes? You would rather own it than have me own it, right? Because then you get to play the game you like. This is what we call an ordinal level problem, which is where we just take our preferences and we rank them in order. It's kind of like watching an Olympic race, but instead of tracking how long it takes people to finish, you just award people medals first, second, and third, and that's it. So from best to worst for you, you own it, then I own it, then we argue, and then Dave gets it. We can just call these four, three, two, and one. So now we can look at the totals of each column. Overall, you will be happier if you buy it with a total of six against four. But what about if I decide to buy the game myself? In that case, you are technically happier getting out of my way. At this point, you could make a choice, but it might be better for you to gain some more information by considering my feelings. You might not know this, but I dislike Twilight Imperium a lot. There was this seven hour game and I got taken out in the first like 45 minutes and then I just slept on a couch for a long, you know, it was terrible. So I don't want Twilight Imperium at all. And in fact, I don't even want you to have Twilight Imperium because then you'd make me play it and I'd have to come up with an excuse I just want Dave to have it, because then I don't have to play. So my preferences are Dave gets it, then you get it, then we argue, and lastly, I get it. Let's split up this matrix and get a better sense of what's going to happen now. In a matrix like this, we'll put my utility value on the left and yours on the right. It's pretty obvious what my move is. You know I'm not going to buy this game. In fact, my strategy is strictly dominant. Because no matter what you decide, I get more utility by not buying the game. There is never a reason for me to consider changing my mind. Without knowing my preferences, your strategy to buy the game is only weakly dominant, but the matrix is pretty clear now about what should happen. This is the Nash equilibrium for this game. Once we circle this box, neither one of us can change our strategy without losing utility. Finding the Nash equilibrium is the key to victory. All right. Let's apply this to Origin's 2013 best board game, Lords of Waterdeep. In Waterdeep, you send your meeple minions to different parts of the city to gather resources. You can gain adventurers or gold into your tavern, or go shopping for more quests. You can use any resources in your tavern to complete those quests. The majority of the victory points you're going to earn come from completing these quests, but at the end of the game you can also get one point for every adventurer you have in your tavern, or for every two gold you have left over. So everything you spend to complete a quest has an actual cost, and you might as well put all these together. Let's take a look at some of the quests in the game and come up with some utility scores. Eliminate Vampire Coven is a pretty straightforward quest. It takes five adventurers to complete, and rewards you with 11 victory points and four gold. In a simple way, we could say that this quest costs five victory points to complete and rewards you with 13 points, so a net of eight victory points. Game theorists consider this to be a ratio level problem because the difference between 11 and eight is totally meaningful, not like the difference between gold and silver and bronze in the Olympics. And if I have a ratio level problem, I can do all sorts of math. Let's look at Infiltrate Halister's Circle, one of the most rewarding quests in the game. It has almost the same resource cost as that vampire quest, but the reward is huge. This is a net gain of 19 victory points. If only one of us can ever complete this quest, it doesn't seem very fair. But actually, let's take a closer look at the board to see what's going on. When you place your meeple minion on a location, you gather all the listed resources. 
We can see by glancing at the starting locations that a single turn can net you one purple or white adventurer, or two orange or black adventurers. One turn can also net you four gold. What if we start to look at these in terms of the turns needed to complete each quest? Eliminate Vampire Coven requires 3.5 turns to complete, and rewards 11 victory points and 4 gold. If that gold is useful to you, that's basically a free turn, so let's just call this 2.5 turns to complete. If we take a quick average, we can see that this nets us 4.4 victory points per turn. Infiltrate Halister's Circle requires 5.5 turns to complete, and rewards 25 victory points, so that's 4.54 victory points per turn. It takes longer to complete the larger quest, but you're basically rewarded in the same way. Taking a look at how many points we get per turn is a useful way to look at these quests that have variable costs and rewards. So let's take a look at a few more of them. Here are two pretty different quests, Sealgate to Cyrix Realm and Thin the City Watch. And if we look at their turns versus victory points, we see that Sealing the Gate gets you only 4.4 victory points per turn, but Thin the City Watch gives you 9 victory points per turn. It's such a cheap quest that I expect it to get picked up as soon as it hits the board. On the other hand, Domesticate Owl Bears and Spy on the House of Light have almost the exact same ratio of victory points per turn. There's no real difference here, so just pay attention to whichever rewards you want and how to chain your quests together. But what about impersonating a noble? What's an intrigue card worth? And how do I compare that with the utility of luring some artisans? I don't know what a building is worth. Or what if I'm the Black Staff and I gain additional points at the end for all the Arcana and Warfare quests I complete? Plus, all of this assumes that I can even get the resources I want. What if you keep taking all my wizards? Or is this like me refusing to buy that copy of Twilight Imperium because we have vastly different preferences? If this game was easy to solve using utility theory, it wouldn't be as fun or as balanced or as interesting to play. But utility theory can help you design new strategies and view games in a new way. Think about utility theory next time you get into an atomic decision in Lords of Waterdeep and see what happens. What other factors should I consider in my utility value? What does my opponent think is important? Do we have different utility values, or will we be at war over the same small set of resources? And now you're thinking like a game theorist. This has been your atomic look inside utility theory in Lords of Waterdeep. Thanks for watching. Where's my graph paper? <laughs>